Bam. If you're working your way to create the perfect smart home, one of the major quality of life improvements you need in a smart home is the first thing you see as you come home, and that is a smart lock. So right here today, I have the Gianfino G5 smart lock that's gonna allow you to turn the door of your home into a smart door leading into your smart home. Once you get this smart lock installed, you're able to unlock your smart home in a variety of different ways, including with a pin code, a physical key just in case the batteries happen to die and you didn't change them, or maybe you have somebody who just wants to kick it old school, a touch sensitive IC card or even just with a Bluetooth connection from your smartphone. Now other than the variety of different ways to unlock your door once you have this installed, there's also a bunch of other features that are actually super cool. One of my favorite features is that this has anti-peeping technology, so let's say your passcode is 1234, but you have people looking over your shoulder and you don't want them to memorize your code so they can come over when you're not there and rob you by typing in your passcode. Basically what this allows you to do is type in random numbers then your passcode, one, two, three, four, before you press enter. That way you can make it look like you have a super long code and nobody's gonna remember it. Another great feature is great if you're gonna have somebody come over but you don't wanna have to give them a physical key. You can actually use the app to send a temporary key to anybody so they can come over. So this is actually great if you happen to host an Airbnb and you wanna have virtual keys that expire after a set period of time. Honestly, that makes it a lot easier than having to have a lockbox with a physical key and have the person put it back and type in a code on the lockbox. It's a hassle, plus they might lose the key and that costs money to replace. This can be both done with an e-key if they download the app to their phone or a simple passcode that they'll type in manually. Also available that can work in conjunction with this smart lock is the G2 Wi-Fi bridge, which will allow you to connect the smart lock to your Wi-Fi so you can actually control it no matter where you are. You can lock and unlock it from across the world, set up passcodes and different keys without even being at home. So that's very cool and I definitely recommend opting for that option if you want to have the best experience possible. And speaking of being away from home, have you ever left your house and you're like, wait a minute, I think I forgot to lock the door and then you have to go all the way back? Well the good news is you can actually set this on a timer so once it's unlocked it counts down from your specified time between 0 and 60 seconds and automatically locks the deadbolt so you never have to worry about locking it ever again. Just close the door and you're set. And of course you can manually lock it with a simple touch of a button. And another great feature if you happen to have multiple people going in and out of your house on the daily and you want to keep track of who entered your house at any given time, it actually keeps a log of every time the door was unlocked inside of the app so you can actually see who and when your door was unlocked. All that being said, this is looking like a very well-designed smart lock, a nicely designed package, of course. You're able to have up to 200 user access code for family and guests, along with a master code feature for improved user access code management. I mean, really, if you think about it, you know how many times you unlock your door with a key and then how many times you also lock your door with a key? That's a lot of time and nobody wants to deal with that. So now with that being said, let's get inside of the box and see what we got. Inside the box, we have installed installation instructions, an extended warranty, a drilling template in case you have to make a hole for the lock, as well as a user guide with everything you need to know about the lock. Everything's nice and padded inside and oh wow, okay, ooh, solid metal design. Also inside the box we have the deadbolt, bags of screws for installation, as well as a plastic housing for the deadbolt in case you need it. And of course we have two traditional metal keys, as well as two futuristic RFID keys which are similar to hotel keys. Now taking a look at the smart lock itself we have a very solid metal build. This is a sleek metal design for enhanced quality as well as a tamper resistant cover so nobody can tamper with your lock. As you can see this is the part that's going to be facing the inside of the door and this is actually how you're going to manually lock your door when you're inside the house and you want to make sure it's locked. Now if we remove this tamper resistant cover we can see the insertion area for four AA batteries that are easily user replaceable when they die. You will get a low battery alert so you know when to change them so you don't end up coming home and need to pull out the metal key. Now taking a look on the inside you can see the control board as well as the part that's going to be connecting to the deadlock and depending on if you have a left or right handed door you're going to turn it a different way so you can make sure you can lock and unlock it perfectly. And really nothing much else to see inside. Everything is solid metal. Now moving on to the exterior smart lock panel. This is also solid metal build along with this touch sensitive capacitive area with the numerical keys, a little sensor right here for the RFID cards as well as the button for the one touch lock. Right underneath we do have the area for the manual metal key in case you need to use that. And then over here on the back you can see all the internals here. This is of course going to connect through the door and out to the other side so you can actually connect it together and make a full solid lock. Overall this is looking like a very simple installation just like they're claiming and this is one of the highest quality smart locks I have felt. It's solid metal. 
Like this is actually solid metal, so you know it's definitely gonna be secure locking up your home. And other than it being solid metal, this is a very nice design. It looks very sleek with this nice matte black finish, and I'm really liking it. So with that being said, there's not much else to do, but we're gonna go get this thing installed and put it to the test. See how easy it is to get it installed, and see how easy it is to use with all the different features. All right, so now it's time to get the smart lock installed. It looks like a very easy and straightforward process. It shouldn't take more than five minutes assuming you already have a pre-drilled hole and you're ready to go. To get started, we're gonna get the strike, strike box, as well as the latch and the four screws to install it. Of course, you wanna make sure the latch is in the unlocked position during installation. We're gonna get the strike installed nice and securely, just like so, that thing's not going anywhere. Next, we're gonna take our latch, make sure you follow this arrow and this part's going to be up. We're gonna shove it inside the door. Just like so, as you can tell, we do have a perfect fit. It's nice and center. If it's not centered, you're gonna wanna take a look at the manual to figure out how to fix that problem. We're gonna get it screwed in nice and tight, just like so. Very tight and secure. Now we're gonna get started with the exterior portion of the lock. We're gonna make sure this metal rod is vertical and we're gonna feed this wire underneath of our latch. So feed the wire through, place the metal rod vertically through the plus sign as you can see, vertical rod, wire underneath, line up the holes, push it through just like so. Everything's lined up perfectly. Next, we're gonna take our interior bracket as well as the two long screws. We're gonna feed the wire through this big hole, vertical rod as well. Line up the hole with the other hole inside and shove the screws in and then get it nice and tight. And make sure before you get it as tight as possible, make sure everything is perfectly straight on both sides because you don't want it to be crooked because I'll make sure to come over to your house and straighten it out myself. So now we can tighten it up the rest of the way. And as you can see, nothing's going anywhere. Everything's nice and secure. And now with the interior assembly of the log, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but not really. So depending on if you have a left hand or right handed door, you're gonna flip this switch either to the left or to the right. We happen to have a right handed door. So we're gonna flip the switch over to the right. And then also on this locking mechanism, you're gonna put it to R or L, depending on if you have a right or left handed door. So you can use this to lock the door. Pretty obvious, right? Now we're gonna get this wire inserted into the circuit board. It's a bit of a tight fit, just like so. And then we have excess wire, so we're gonna actually feed it back into the door to make sure it's out of the way. And remember, right or left, depending on your door, line it up on the metal rod, push it on, and then click into place. Very satisfying nice and smooth everything's going according to plan and before you actually screw this on if you want to make sure you got the right or left indicator correct just twist it like so you see you can use it as a manual lock so far that means you did everything right up to this point now we're going to take our little screw it's different than the three screws that look identical fyi we're going to put it in this little hole on the bottom battery compartment so twist it in get it nice and tight and now Everything's nice and secure, not going anywhere. Next, we're gonna take our four brand new AA batteries and easily insert them into the lock. And we do have power because we heard that beep. As you can see, the keypad is lighting up. We did a pretty good job, huh? But we're not done yet. Next, we're putting on the battery cover, which is gonna keep everything nice and protected. It easily slips right on. And then we're gonna take our three identical little screws to lock it into place. One on the right side, one on the left side, and one on the bottom. And just like that, about five minutes later, a very elegant looking smart lock securely installed. Now we can put it to the test. So now that we got this thing installed, obviously inside you can use it as a manual lock. Unlock, open the door. Simple, right? Lock it, the door won't open. It's crazy, but it works. But all that's boring. Let's head outside to check out all the cool stuff. So let's say you just got home. You come here, the door's locked. However, will we, oh, first of all, what is this? We got it. Yeah, very nice. But like I was saying, you get home, door's locked. How do you get inside? Well, if you have somebody who doesn't like technology, of course we have the good old fashioned metal key that's never failed anybody ever. So I've been told. You can just stick it right inside, unlock the door, just like so, get inside. Very easy, just like any other lock. So no problem there. You can of course also lock it with said metal key, just twist it the other way, and we're locked out once more. But metal keys, we don't want that. What if you can act like you're a hotel and have an actual touch sensitive key where you just touch it to the touchpad right here? Bam, 
instant gratification. You get inside just like that. What if you want to leave? You can of course use the auto lock function of the smart app, but if you don't want to wait for that and you're just a little bit paranoid, you can also just hold down this button over here on the right side for three seconds. It locks and now you're locked out. Very easy. But then of course, if you're like me, you don't wanna to have to carry around a metal key, you don't wanna to have to carry around a smart key, but you just wanna you know, type in a code because you feel like James Bond. So of course, remember you can set up different codes for different people so you can keep track of who's coming into your house and what time they came into your house with the app. But the default master key is one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is how you're gonna type in a code. You're gonna wake the display, type one, two, three, four, five, six, press this button right here, and it instantly unlocks. Easy. Now, what if somebody's with you, you don't really know them too well, you don't want them having access to your home by peeking over your shoulder and looking at what you're typing in? So like I said, it has the anti-peeping function, so you can type in random numbers, then your passcode before you press unlock. So let's try that out. Random numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, unlock. Oh, there we go. It let us in, easy. And now nobody knows what my code is because there's a bunch of random numbers in there. They're gonna think I remembered a really long code and they're not gonna be able to remember that. So that's pretty much the basic functionality of the smart lock, but now we're gonna get inside of the app and take a look at all the smarter features. So to get all the smart features of the lock accessible to you, you're gonna go into your app store and download the TT Lock app. We're gonna open it up, get your account set up, get everything registered and you're ready to go. We're gonna tap on the big plus sign button in the middle and make sure we're within two meters of the smart lock to pair it up. We're gonna tap on plus. We can either tap on door lock or it looks like we're gonna tap on all locks and it'll just scan for any sort of lock in the area. We'll just tap on door lock to make things easy. Touch any key to activate the keypad. It lit up, we're gonna tap on next. Oh, that was fast. It instantly found us, so we're gonna tap on add. Oh, it beeped. I'm assuming that's a good sign. Oh, and there we go. Now we can rename it. I'm of course gonna just name this front door. Tap on OK. Yeah, very easy setup process. So next we just choose if the door is opening to the right or the left. It's opening to the right, okay. So we're gonna tap on open to the right, OK. And now we're ready to go. Very clean looking app. So as you can see right now it's locked. We can do a simple tap to unlock it. Did anyone else hear a doorbell? It unlocked it though. Look at that, very easy. And if you wanna lock it with the app, you just hold down the lock button for a couple seconds and then it'll lock the lock, just like so. So inside of the app on the top right, you can see how much battery power the lock has left. Right now we're at 100% because we did start off with brand new AA batteries. So over on the left side, we do have a menu button. We can tap on that and we can see different options. You can add another lock, add a Wi-Fi gateway if you wanna be able to access your lock when you're away from your home through the Wi-Fi connection. I would definitely recommend that because it's very nice if somebody calls you up, you don't have to give them a code or you can make them a code on the fly or you can just unlock the door for somebody to go in real quick. You can access customer service options as well as go to settings and under settings we have a bunch of different options you can have sounds turned on and off I like to have it on so I know what's happening we can have touch to unlock turned on and off push notifications turned on and off so every time somebody unlocks your door it tells you so you know that somebody's here if we go into lock users you can actually set up e-keys to send to different people for example if you have an Airbnb you can send them a temporary e-key so they can access your home during their stay if we tap on send multiple e-keys you can add the recipients email address add which locks you want them to have access to and when you want the time to start and end and also if you want to allow remote unlocking if you happen to have the gateway or of course you can make a permanent one so it never expires for example if you want to make it for your kids or recurring so it's only good at certain times of the week next we have authorized admin you can create an admin account with a name which locks you want them to have access to if it's permanent time remote unlocking pretty much the same stuff we can have different groups for the lock you can transfer locks you can transfer gateways set different languages you can turn screen lock on and off, hide invalid access in case you want to hide expired keys. You can require your phone to be online to access the lock and a bunch of other stuff that we don't really care about. Now back on the main screen, we have e-keys. So these are digital keys you can email to people and they can access on their phone with the app so they don't need a special code or a key to get inside. It's just literally their phone. The future, right? Pretty cool. You can tap on send e-key and it's going to be the same process as earlier where you put their email address, their name, when you want it to be valid, if you want it to be permanent, one-time use or recurring at the same time every week. So then we have passcodes. This is basically just gonna be giving somebody a code that they want so they can just type it in whenever they get to your house. We can just generate a passcode right now. You can choose when you want it to expire or if you want it to be permanent. So we'll just call test generate 
and then it gave us a random code, 01647090. So theoretically, we should be able to type in this code, 01647090, unlock, and it unlocked. As you can see, we have an instantly valid key code for anybody to use. Now obviously you don't want to make a random code because it's hard enough to remember numbers that you make. So if we go up to the top, you can tap on custom, and you can actually customize the code between six and nine digits to whatever you want. Next, we have RFID cards, and those are the actual really cool cards that you just tap onto the display to unlock it. So we can add a card here. We can type in the name of the person. We'll just do tester this time. Tap on next. It's connecting with the lock. And now we put the card against the lock. And now the card got recorded to the lock and now it's added so anybody with this card can actually unlock it with a simple tap open the door you're ready to go so that's cool because you can actually get additional key cards and set them to the lock in case you want to give them out to a bunch of different people although personally e-keys are the way to go for me next we have remote unlocking so if we go to remote you can add a remote so we'll just call this testing one Next, and it looks like you actually can use a physical remote. I don't have one of those, but if you have one, you can, you know, set it up with this. Next, we have authorized admin. If we go in here, you can see the administrators that have access to your lock to adjust all the different settings. Obviously, you don't want to give that to anybody. You'd probably just have one for yourself. So next is one of my favorite features. We have records. If you tap on this, it gives you a record of every time your door was unlocked and by who and with what method they use. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different records here. We can see test unlock the door with the pin code of 0164, you know, that randomly generated code we had. And then it was locked by pressing the lock key. And then it was also unlocked by tester with the IC card, which was that touch sensitive key. And it tells us exactly what time that happened. Very cool. I like that. So you know exactly when somebody went in your house, you're like, hey, my dog's missing. And you were there. Where is he? Now you know who has him. And then finally, we do have settings for this individual lock. We'll tap on settings, and now we have basic settings right here at the top. You can see the lock number, MAC ID, battery, validity period, name, yada, 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 all that basic stuff. We can turn remote locking on or off, so it can be unlocked remotely, or if it's turned off, it can only be unlocked by Bluetooth. But of course, you do need the gateway to access that feature. Next, we have auto lock, so the door will automatically lock after a set amount of time. I have it set at five seconds. We're gonna tap on save. All right, so I just unlocked the door. One, two, three, four, five. And it instantly locked all by itself after five seconds. Very nice so you don't forget. Next, we have passage mode. So this will actually leave the door unlocked in case you're having a party and people are gonna be coming in and out at all times and you don't wanna have to have people constantly type in a code because that would get annoying and everyone's just gonna leave. Next, we have lock sound. So you can actually have the sound of the lock when it locks. For example, if I hold down the button, you can hear it beeping, so I know that it's locking. Next, we have tamper alert. So if somebody tampers with the lock, it'll alert you, so you know somebody's trying to break into your house. And then we have privacy lock that you can turn on and off. We have the reset button on and off, although I feel like you should disable that so nobody can reset your lock. The door opening direction in case you happen to switch doors. The lock clock, so you can calibrate the time so you know exactly when everybody came into your house to make sure it's set up with your time zone. Then we have basic stuff like diagnosis, upload data, import stuff from another lock, which is actually pretty cool firmware update as well as pairing it with your smart assistants like Amazon Alexa and Google Home so with all that being said this is a very elegantly designed I mean just look at this this really adds a good vibe to your house the lock looks amazing very sleek easy to use has a bunch of different options when it comes to accessing your home whether you want a physical key not me but you know maybe keep one outside under a rock or something just in case the batteries happen to die and you can't get in but you also have pin codes that you can make for all of your friends and family as well as a touch sensitive card so you can feel like you have a hotel when you're having an airbnb just give them one of those they'll feel really cool when they get it the installation was very simple and i can definitely recommend this lock because it looks great feels great very solid and it works very well, it's easy to set up. And really, it's just checking all the boxes and what you want in a smart lock for your home.